Hello and welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's time for another of those afternoon teas with Richard V's. Well, that's not quite what it's called. <laughs> And it's lovely to be back. As you can see, we've got uh, a bit of a jingle going on in the show today. Uh, thank you very much for all the lovely comments that came in, by the way, for all those wonderful people, uh, from those wonderful people, I should say, who have been very complimentary on our trial run. And, of course, things are going to get better as we go. Um, I think it was Joe who mentioned that, oh, it, wouldn't it be nice if you had an opening title sequence and some music while you chatter in the background? Background. Yes, yes, I, I know, I know it would be nice, but I don't want to go to town and do too much if suddenly it's all pear-shaped, nobody's interested and it's a waste of time. Obviously, as the show grows, we can add bits and pieces so each time people can go, oh, look, that's nice, he's got a bit of music. There's a lovely little music bed underneath. I've got a, I'm recording this all live, as if it's live, so as I said before, I've got buttons and things... Um, I just think it gives the show a different sense than if one records all the links and then goes to the edit machine on the other side of the room and just plays all the bits in. I think so. But it may be that in the end, that's the easiest option of doing because the show isn't actually live. Now, I did think we could do the show live and then I record the show and then I kill the live and then upload... The anyway, that gets a very silly and a bit complicated. So, what's in today's show? Lots of exciting things. We're going to start with Julia on her ukulele. Somebody had said... Um, I think a number of people have said, Julia, you know, you and your ukulele, we love it. We want to see more of that. Now, Julia is learning and practising all the time. Every time she comes over to my place, she says, hang on, Richard, before we do anything, before you get a cuddle or a kiss or anything else like that, uh, up with the laptop, ding, 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 ding. She plays a lovely tune. And I said to her, look, people want to know about this, Julia. Let us find out more about it. Can you, would you mind um, doing a, a, a series for us? And she said, yeah, no problem at all. So we're going to call this Julia's Ukulele. <laughs> better. Just got my ukulele tuned up. So I thought I would tell you about my ukulele and uh, how I got into it. Um, I was first given a ukulele. Well, technically it was my eldest who was first given a ukulele. A nice black kahalo, I think you say. Um, in my mind, it's a bit, just slightly more than a toy ukulele, but it still makes an, you know, a decent sound. Um, I say decent, it makes a sound that doesn't sound like a toy. <laughs> um, but I was lucky enough to receive this one for my birthday. Probably cost about 70, 80 pounds. So a little bit more expensive than the 30 pound one that, was, that we were given a few years back, which inevitably my son didn't really get into. Um, but it's a shame because it's one of the easiest instruments to play and it's small. So it, it's, you know, it can take it almost anywhere and it's not gonna take up much room. <clears throat> I found uh, my um, old violin the other day. The, I was going to say my first instrument that I ever had, but actually it was my second because the first one was, I think everyone my age at least, um, had a go at the recorder in school so um, that would have been my first, um, which I actually like. Even now, I still like it, but I'm a bit shy about playing it because a lot of people don't like the sound of a, of a recorder just because of the sheer terror it puts in them from school. Um, so after that, I was uh, my mum wanted me to, well, asked me what I would like to do and I wanted to, to play the cello. But because I'm not very tall now and I was much smaller then, um, in it would have been uh, primary school and um, they didn't have a cello teacher um, available they only had a violin teacher who said that well quite honestly um, because I was so small there wouldn't really be even the smallest cello wouldn't be very quite small enough for me so she recommended the violin anyway which was lovely I do love the violin 
It is the hardest instrument to play. I, I'm so I'm told and I believe it. <laughs> so I never really got very good at all with it, barely more than beginner, um, which I forgive myself for now, um, now that I've actually kind of gotten to grips with this little beauty. I love this one though. Um, I love the colour of her, her, him, whatever. But I love, it looks like a, the, um, if you know what a green man is, um, the, the oaken faced, you know, oak leaf faced um, kind of wizened uh, man image there. Love it. Don't know how well that comes up on the camera. Um, so, um, so I got the violin, I played that. Um, but because obviously being a kid and practicing that wasn't very pleasant on the old ear drums and it was very embarrassing with you know family and my mum bless her she always used to say have you got a bellyache again thinking it was a really funny joke and yes in hindsight it was but it did kind of shut me down a bit unfortunately but it did put enough of the spark of I love to just make sound it's therapeutic you know it's it's got that essence of um, connection with something other than yourself um, and um, I didn't go straight to the ukulele after that of course there was a long gap where I didn't play any instruments and um, what did I have next oh it was a mandolin funny enough because I started hanging out with um, a friend of a friend who was in a duo the teapot junkies I loved them I became a bit of their roadie and I'd be driving the van for them so that they could drink after doing their, or during their gig. And, um, and I'd help carry everything. So um, we were in the studio one afternoon. I started hanging out with them in the studio one afternoon. And, um, and Glenn, his name was, he, he pulled out this, this kind of battered looking mandolin that someone had given him. It was, you know, needed to fix it up. And I watched him, I was sitting there playing, practicing my recorder at the time because um, I wanted to be in the, the duo. So um, yeah, I watched him string it, heard him tune it, and then the, the first minute he went like that, it wouldn't sound like that, this is a ukulele, but on the mandolin, and I was like, oh, it piqued my interest, because although each note has two strings, it, it, it's um, tuned the same way a violin was. So uh, instantly I recognised that, and I was like, ooh. He was like, would you like to have a go? And I was like, oh, Yes, please. So he handed it over and by the end of the, you know, an hour or two later, he said, so do you want it then? I was like, yes, please. Yes, please. How much do you want? He's like, just have it, have it. I was, you know, it was just, it's just a little bit of a, um, a, a hobby to, to fix things up. So that got me back into music, but I, you know, I got so far with that, but ultimately it led me on to the ukulele because it's easier to play. It's, it sounds lovely and, well, I've come so much further with it than I have ever done with any other instrument. Really happy with it. Love it. And maybe I'll tell you more at another point. So there we go. The lovely Julia, isn't she? It, talented and very excitable, which is great. We love that. Uh, thank you so much, Julia. And we're looking forward to the next part of this. And she's going to show us how to play it. Uh, and if you've got a ukulele and you've got some hints and tips or, or you would like some instruction, um, I'm not saying that Julia's uh, ready to give instruction, but uh, we hope that uh, it will inspire you to pick it up and play. And if you've just started, how successful are you getting on with the ukulele? It's great fun. Um, I love to think that I could play it. I just haven't got the time to put into it. Um, I, when I left school, I played a violin. That wasn't much cop. I, uh, I scared, I think, the scared the rats and the mice and all of the wildlife in the back garden. Um, I think I did about, I don't know, three weeks with the violin, the school violin they'd given me, um, and it was rubbish. I am much better um, trying to do more practical things like cooking. Now, if you saw my vlog this morning, and if you haven't seen it, it is up there. Um, I was cooking blackberry and apple pie. And I said in that vlog that you'd have to wait till this episode to in here, in the afternoon tea, to see how it came out. Now, if you missed it, uh, here's a little pre of what I was doing last night cooking apple and blackberry pie. I have my Essie warming up nicely 
and I thought I would make an apple pie. This isn't really a, a cooking program because I'm not really a great cook. Right, as far as I know, we just put this in the pan and I don't know how much sugar you put in, but I don't want to put too much, I don't want to make it too sweet. I need to decide, I suppose, what, what pan and what size pie. So I'm going to part cook these. You see, if I do that, there's probably enough to do one pie. Like that. Not too much of the juice. Cool, look at that. Oh, cinnamon. Cool, blimey, I can smell that. That does smell nice. It's almost Christmassy, isn't it, as soon as you do that? But that's what it is now, and it's all set to go. So I guess you want to know, how did it come out? What did it look like? <laughs> and I don't blame you. Well, uh, later that night, the lovely Julia turned up and um, we had a good old nosh up. It is time to sample the apple and blackberry pie. Here it is. Excuse the naff filming. Not as good as it was before. So, so far, Julia, I've cooked it. You're doing the custard. We're going to go and eat it. You won't see that because we don't want to subject you to that. So I'm just going to cut a little piece and we're going to sample a little piece now. Is that okay? Oh, yes. Then yeah. you can tell me what you think mm, of my pie making. Just be, let's take that off the heat yeah, for a second. Yes, I'm oh, my burn. Can I get you just to hold that camera very carefully whilst I just dive in here? Now, of course, the pastry has nothing to do with me. I'm going to put that on there. I should have put it on a plate, really. That is what it looks like. Now, of course, come out of the oven, it's gonna be a bit hot. I'm gonna take the camera and uh, I'm gonna let you do the eating. Mm. You know how to spoil it, that little girl. Be you? careful, it's warm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you taste the apple and the blackberry and the cinnamon? You could have afforded a little bit more cinnamon, but I can really taste... more. Mm, All oh, right, I can taste the cinnamon. I do actually use a lot of cinnamon, so I think it. Um, but this is delicious. Oh, it's not so easy filming like this. Mm. I can absolutely taste the um, blackberry. Oh, may I have a little sampleette? Oh, go on then. Oh yeah, I see what you mean about the cinnamon. Mm. That tastes nice, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. And that, with custard, is going to be delightful. So, we're going to have top nosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thank you. And uh, if you didn't see the video, um, I'll put a link in the description and somewhere, and then you can check out the vlog of me making it. But, um, yeah, we'll have to make some more, won't we? Yes, mm. definitely. If you've got any recipes, send them in. Do you know what? Must be mince pie time almost. Ooh, I did make mince pies once before. Last year. Yeah. I think Might they be. were delicious. Be making... That was homemade pastry. Sorry to keep interrupting oh, yeah. you. That no, was homemade nip, pastry. Nip, nip. Um, I would like... To... Oh, you don't like Christmas pudding, do you? With the six... I would like to make a... I guess it's nearly time to make one, isn't it? Christmas puddings. Yeah. Oh, yes, because it has to sit... It's just mature, doesn't it? Yeah, because you have to pull the brandy on and then pull the brandy on and then pull the brandy on and leaving it for a wait. Yeah, you'll just have the brandy by the sounds of it. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> right. Thank you for watching. That's it. Turn the phone off. Uh, yes, that was recorded with my phone. So uh, apologies for the shaky camera work. But I can tell you it was absolutely delicious. Mmm. Yum. And I will do that again. And uh, as you heard there, Julia said that I could put extra cinnamon in. I never quite know how much to put in. But I'm so thrilled that that was very successful and I will give it again. Somebody else in the comments um, had said, I was surprised you didn't put uh, with the excess uh, pastry that I made, you know, to the lovely Julia or something on it. I mean, blimey, give us a break. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Mark Burgess reminded me that the apples that he sent a, a year or so ago when I did, the, I did an earlier recipe with it, but with um, homemade pastry. And one time I did the homemade pastry and it was a complete and utter disaster. 
Never mind. Um, now, wanted to tell you, in that vlog, I mentioned that a very lovely lady called Ellie and her friend Nikki popped round yesterday, which uh, they did, and they, uh, N uh, Ellie used to run a pub called The Dolphin in Littlehampton. A, a lovely pub, apparently. I unfortunately, I never went there. She showed us some pictures. A haunted pub as well. She gave me a book. We'll go into this in more detail uh, another time. And, and uh, she's been around and I said, oh, would you be up for an interview? And she said, yeah, yeah, no, I would. To tell us about her pub, an English-themed pub um, and all of that. And there was lots of fascinating bits and pieces that uh, she imparted. In fact, if you look at the set, you'll notice that the set has... Uh, changed just a little bit. Let me uh, come back to a button over here, which will show you a couple of items that uh, she very generously brought round and has given to the studio. Uh, you can see on the uh, left of the screen is a Bush wireless, and the other one uh, is a G. I think it's G and C. Is it General Electric Company or GEC? GEC, um, old, genuine. Uh, valve operated wirelesses and they uh, very quickly became part of the set you can't see them terribly much in the I want to get some lights inside them which would be lovely so that they light up a bit or a little light on them um, so I haven't had a chance to do that as yet she also gave me have a look at this this is now I know I think Sean James Cameron on his um, channel was talking about one of these recently he picked it up quite cheaply it's a, a bed warmer. It's like a hot water bottle. It's, um, it has a little spout here that you put the water in the top. Hot water, boiling water. Shove that in there. Um, unlike a, a rubberized version, which can perish, this is made of um, clay, uh, fired clay, you know. So you, you stick that in the bed. You can move it around. It warms up. I will have to give it a whirl, actually, and see if it works and let you know. Uh, maybe I'll give that as a task for the lovely Julia to do. Um, she can try it out. As long as she doesn't scold her feet. Nobody wants to do that, do they? Um, so there are other bits and pieces. Uh, if you look here, uh, there we go. Look at that. I'm going to show you that. Uh, it's uh, really, really interesting. As you can see, it's a Spitfire uh, facing down. Didn't know where else to put it. I did try hanging it in the room, but I think you need two wires because otherwise it was just spinning around and doing things and you'd continually bash your head on it and it didn't want to do that so uh, that's no good but those sort of things could be the type of items you would have in your ideal home as you know lovely julia and i are doing a feature within the afternoon tea um where we look at our fantasy houses so let's find out from julia and i what our fantasy houses might be and uh, we'll start this time with me and then Julia will tell us the next part of the fantasy house. So there we are in the hall which we described last time mm -hmm. which was interesting and now there is as you described in your hallway in the old farmhouse the old farm there are doors always. here there and everywhere all iggledy biggledy and mine um which was more sort of like a georgian more sort of nice uh, higher class thing um also has doors in it and so we're going to go into the first of whichever door you like in your fantasy house and i'm going to start this time go ahead so as you come in, um, I imagine that there are reception rooms and various things, but I'm going to take you to a door uh, on the left, which is going to be the library. Oh. Yes, because I love books, oh, obviously. So I think my library, I've got to think about this, um, would have bare floorboards. Mm -hmm. I think there's a wood feel to right. it. A bare floorboards, but with a nice rug. Some comfortable chairs, probably... Oh, Chesterfield chairs, those winged Chesterfield chairs that oh, we yes. saw when we were at Ardingly. Yep. Um, and they were lovely. Um, some leather back chairs. So there's leather and wood going on. And then all around uh, shelves of books and some lovely old leather bound books that probably have never, ever get read. Mm. Um, and then all the books that I would read and a couple of little side tables so that you can put your books piled up high, piled up high with a um, place for coffee and tea and maybe on those very cold nights 
a little bit of brandy or something, mm. and then a fire, uh, an open fire there with some logs and what have you, and a mantelpiece, which again would probably have some very small books, the sort of little pocket um, I Spy type books, and big window, so you've got lots of light, so you can sit with the light coming in, um, that you can then look out. And the, the windows would have small glasses, you know, panes. You oh, know. yes, lots, lots the, of small the, the panes. Old fashioned yeah, style. very, I mean, everything about me would be old fashioned, wouldn't it? Um, so that's, I think that's probably what my library would look like. There, the, there wouldn't be any electronics in there. You're not going in there. Um, to so say, have you got candles for lighting? Uh, oh, lighting. Is that the only electric in there? Yeah, you could have, actually, that would be quite nice, isn't it, to have electric light candles. Mm. So they look like candles. Maybe at some sort of... Um, chandelier. Sh- yeah, but a, a tamed down chandelier, not like a grandiose. No, a simple one. Simple chandelier with some little little reading lamps, mm. you know, the sort. Um, silver. Silver, leather, wood. That's That's my sort of thing. Mm. So there you go. Had no idea you were going to describe a library as the first one. I was going to go for a sitting room. Okay, let's hear about your sitting room. I'll describe room. my library yeah. another time. Yes, do. <laughs> well, my sitting room. Well, it's got a lovely large fireplace, of course. Yes. With a lovely wood burning. Um, wood burning stove? Yep, in there. Lovely. Exactly. What kind of wood burning stove? Well, I'm not really okay ex- with them. Well, so. you get like round pot belly ones. Oh, yeah. Um, so that it's sort of enclosed, you get ones with big glasses, you mm. can have very modernistic ones. Or is it an open well, no, that I've just described it as a stove, isn't it? Yeah, wood has, burning stove. In a sitting room, I think a wood burning stove is great because of the heat. Yes, yes. So carry on. Sorry, otherwise, there's the open fire. Yes. Is that, well, yeah, anyway, it's, it's a wood burning Let's just say it's the Essie. Yeah. An Essie in there. Oh, an Essie. Bless yeah, you, the why, Essie. In your not? sitting room. Why not? Mm. Why not? You can make a tea whilst you're there. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> um, so yeah big fireplace lovely warm fire of course you're going to have to have all the logs piled up either side in this large fireplace yes um, nice window with a beautiful view out across the valleys and the hills yes of uh, our lovely England yes and um, I'd like large sofa in there it's going to be a teal colour a dark a teal, teal sofa yep, a dark yeah. teal sofa in, in, in leather um, but a Chesterfield one. Oh, like the, yeah. Yep, yep. It's got the roll size and it's like dimpled. Um, and that's got to have lots of lovely velvety cushions in, uh, in varying yeah. shades of teal from, from pale to dark. Um, so would you have matching armchairs to go with the sofa? Well, yes. I'd probably have at least, yeah, why not? Let's go for two, two big. So is um, it a biggish sitting room? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just, you know, getting a getting a measure of it. Well, it's not massive. No. It's, it's not. It's not. Small. It's not small. It's not pokey. Yeah. Not pokey. Or cosy, as some people might call it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very snug. It's snug. Cozy. Yes. Um, um, I'd have to have a lovely big um, rug next to the fire, in front of the fire, for yeah. my pets to go and, sn- and cuddle on. Big furry and me to curl one. Up or on the, on the, um, uh, what kind of a rug? What colour are we looking at? Difficult when you ask details, isn't it? Let's say purple. Purple. <laughs> what else would it be? Purple rug by the fire. That sounds good. A purple rainbow rug, i.e. it's it's lots of different shades. Shades of purple. Of purple yeah. Oh, like mauves and things. So yeah, yeah. would that match your curtains? Because you haven't said your curtains. Yeah, well, let's go for it. Let's have those purple curtains as well. Um, <clears throat> it's going to have to have a strip of teal in each one, though. Right. Of course. Yeah, to, purple to, and teal yeah. are very much your yeah. colours. And then there's got to be a couple of uh, purple velvet cushions, you know, the, the rounded ones. What else on, is in on the, the uh, on the in sofa. the sitting room then? What else is in the sitting room? Well, you can. I, we need a we need um, smallish coffee tables that go between it, the, the chairs. Yeah. So we can put our teas and coffees on and yeah. hopefully not get knocked down by the, the cats or the dogs or Any, the kids. Anything adorning the uh, walls? Um, yes, I'd have. Some large, lovely images um, of either horses. Paintings? <laughs> yes. Framed? Yes. Yeah. Framed paintings. Of paintings, not photographs? No. Yeah. Unless I had a horse, in which case there would be my horse up there. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Cool. Um, what else? Uh, I've described the window. Yeah. Um, light? Light. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd... I'd I like the, the idea of the, the electric chandelier. Yeah. yeah um, 
simple but not too much. Simple but not over uh, avant garde. Yeah, maybe a little bit more Art Deco and simplistic. Just these, you know, hanging whoop whoop whoop. You know. I like the whoop, the whoop, 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 whoop. whoop. I particularly like the sound effects. <laughs> well, there we are. Well, look, we've run out of time. We have. Um, but that is uh, interesting. So we still, again, whoa, would whoa, like... Whoa. To... I forgot one thing. What? I'd have the single-seater, an extra single-seater, but it's yeah. a swivel chair. So it's oh. a cuddle chair. Yes. Oh, and that's God. a pale teal. Right, a pale teal yep. swivel chair. What would you have um, in your fantasy first room that we're going to visit? You've, some of you told us about your rooms, but we want to know what you would have in the house. Anyway, brilliant. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Richard. Lovely. It's... It's all madness. It's all madness. Um, here, thank you very much, uh, Julia, for coming in and telling us more about your fantasy house. That's fantastic. And we will do another room on another time. Please keep your comments coming about the fantasy houses and different rooms and how you would decor your place. Now, I wanted to talk to you about premium bonds. Have you got premium bonds? I've got some premium bonds. They were bought for me when I was a kid. Um, years and years ago, I never knew. It was sort of a way of saving. But is it still a good way of saving? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, maybe uh, you know whether it's a good way of... Oops, sorry about that. I'm pressing buttons that I shouldn't be pressing. There we go. Um, I wanted to get over to uh, this screen here. Premium Bonds. This is uh, looking on the website. Um, uh, on the... It's now NSA... NS and I, oh, that's what it is, dot com, uh, where you go to get your premium bonds. And uh, it looks like um, you can earn, well, all sorts of prize. The maximum pay in is £50,000. The minimum pay in is £25. Uh, no tax to pay. And uh, the odds, this is what I found were interesting 24,000 to 1 to win for every one pound, which I think the odds are then better than the national lottery, which is um, is interesting, don't you think? But the question is, the question I want to... Have you got any? Have you done it? It's. I was talking to Steve Mitchell, one of our lovely viewers who popped in earlier today. It was very nice to see him. Thank you very much. We were talking about that. He's not a great fan of premium bonds. It's. I used to know a mate called Nigel, and he bought about 20,000 of them. His premium bonds kept coming up, and he'd earn about £50 a month, uh, something like that on average. Sometimes it was only 20 or 25. But he was always getting something. Or sometimes you'd get £100, you know. And, and that was sort of equivalent, I suppose, to putting the money in the bank. You'd have these winnings. But somebody like me, who'd had these things for something like 40 years, nothing, not once, not at all. So that 24,000 to one was certainly working against me. But are they worth doing? If you've got any spare money these day and age... Apparently, the uh, interest rate's gone up, so maybe it is worth putting it more into the bank than you would with premium bonds. It says the, the interest rate is 2.20, 2.20% annual prize fund rate. Don't know what that means. I've never won anything, but I'd be interested if you have premium bonds. Are they something? I mean, to me, it's something I'd forgotten about till somebody mentioned Ernie. And I thought, oh, yeah, that was the name of the computer, wasn't it? And I remember on Tomorrow's World, I think it was, where they showed you all of that sort of um, bits and bobs that um, Ernie was around. So now, before we go, email. Had this rather interesting email. See what you make of this. Uh, dear Richard, this is from, uh, I'm going to call the email, I don't know if she wants to be recognised or anything, I'm just going to call her C, that's uh, the initial obviously of her name. She says, sorry to bother you, as you, as I know you must be incredibly busy, but I wondered if you could please include a small section on one of your videos about the grammar police. You know, those kind of people who try and make themselves feel superior by pointing out others' grammar errors publicly. Um, I've experienced this on your channel comments, and I must admit, it's put me off commenting on your videos again, which is a shame. It's also making me wonder who else has uh, this has happened to, and who else may have been put off from commenting on your videos. 
Very interesting thing. Yes, I do see that the grammar police come up from time to time and as if they've got nothing else better to do and they're holier than thou. I would be interested for the sake of C and anybody else who's had that if you've had it and what you should do about it. I mean, you know, laughing, these people have got nothing else better to do. But it is, if it puts people off, maybe they don't realise it, maybe they don't think about it, that it is potentially putting people off um, commenting on the show. I mean, I often complain that we we have people who um, uh, put in horrible comments, but it's interesting that not only is the sometimes the horrible comments to me because they think I'm an idiot, and that's fair enough. I've put my content up, but those people who are just got a point, and they may have you know been a bit rushed, had the um, the spell checker come in and put the wrong word in, or they've used the wrong version of they, there, and them, or that sort of thing. And people are grown up enough, aren't they, to understand the meaning and get over it? Or have I got that wrong? Do let me know. I'll be interested. Uh, Richard at Vobes.com. I need a little thing that comes up. I, th this is where I'm learning all the time of all the different bits. If you want to send me an email, Richard at Vobes.com. Or shove something in the comments and let us know. Hope you've enjoyed the show this week. But until next time, from the afternoon tea team. It's a very good bye. Goodbye.